Welcome back. Well, Megan Hunter has been living with a rare disease called myasthenia gravis for over 10 years. She has had to wear a mask and use alcohol-based sanitizers since her diagnosis. The now 31-year-old advocates and also is championing for others living with rare diseases in South Africa. And since the lockdown has started uh, you know, sharing with her friends online as well as South Africans at large how to take basic care uh, you know, during this time, Megan joins us now via Skype. Megan, a very good morning to you. Thank you very much for your time. It's, look, I, I've personally never heard of this uh, disease before. So uh, for my purpose, as well as our viewers, tell us what is myasthenia gravis all about. So myasthenia gravis is a neuromuscular autoimmune condition. Right. And what happens is the message between my nerves and muscles gets blocked. Mm. So I'll know that I need to swallow, but the actual muscles won't work. Or I'll know that I need to get out of bed, but I can't lift myself up. Right. Um, they're pretty much like teenagers. They don't want to listen. They don't want to do what you want them to do. They just do their own thing. Right. And uh, I understand that you have to follow the strict uh, hygiene protocols, which means using masks and, and sanitizers. How's that fit in there? So um, because it's an autoimmune condition, I'm on immune suppressants. Right. And this is to try and help my body cope with it and also to prevent the disease progressing. So because I'm on immune suppressants, I'm highly susceptible to anything floating around. Mm -hmm. So flu, any kind of germs that there are, I'm prone to get them. So the mask is there to protect me and also to protect others. Um, I have sanitizer in my house, in my handbag, at work with me. Mm. Pretty much everywhere mm. I can, I have it with me. So this is something new for, for most of our viewers out there. But you've been doing this, these hygiene protocols, I guess, for the last 10 years. What, is, what sort of lessons have you learned in terms of using the right sanitizers, using the right masks? What advice can you give our viewers? So I actually bought a mask from overseas called a VOG mask, and it has a little filter in it. So it's not a disposable mask, um, and it's, it filters out a lot more ho-hos. Um, it, it has pretty patterns on it, so it gives me a little bit of happiness when I have to look different um, going about my normal life. Obviously, before this whole coronavirus People weren't used to seeing people, others, walking around in masks. Um, and I would often get weird and wonderful looks. So having something with pretty designs on it was really something to try and cheer me up. Yeah. Um, I use hospital-grade sanitizer at my house. It's one that – it's called Bioscrub. And this is really the best one that you can get. I know it's in high demand and probably not available at the moment. Right. But having a rare condition, all of us have stocked up on it way before the coronavirus came around. Right. Do you have that mask on hand mm -hmm. uh, by any chance? Can you show um, it to us? Yes. Just, as, yeah. just so to see how it looks. All right. That I wear. Yeah. Um, they have a little metal clip at the yeah. top so it can mold exactly around my nose. Right. Then that's the filter. Um, that I filters out the hocos, as the you say. Yeah. That's the filter that filters yeah. out the chokos. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, and then I wash it with a hospital-grade sanitizer. So I have right. two so I can alternate between them. Um, so I'll wear this the one day, and then I'll wash it tonight, and yeah. then tomorrow I'll wear this one. Um, and it really... Yeah. What? It fits properly. I see. I see. And how freely available is it? Where do you get it from? Um, so... I got these ones from overseas, mm. and they were about 700 rand. Mm. Um, but there are some companies in South Africa that have brought them in now. Yeah. Because of the whole filter behind it, the fit, the everything, the name behind the brand, they really were the best available option. And I got them a couple of years ago when I was undergoing chemo and a stem cell transplant. Yeah. So being cautious was of the utmost importance. So, uh, Megan, if there's anybody that knows 
sanitizes its use. So maybe a good question to you would be, how do you pick up the fakes in terms of, there's so many new brands that are out there, people, you know, from the normal brands that they used to. Can you, can you tell that something has, well, we told to you 60% alcohol in, in a sanitizer. Can you even tell by the, the touch and feel of it or, or not? Not so much the touch and feel, but definitely by the smell of it. If it smells beautiful and amazing, then it's probably not going to actually sanitize your hands. So you want that one that sort of you go, oh, like it's Mm. got that alcohol scent to it. And that hospital smell, I Mm. think that's really the best way to judge it. Um, You don't want something that's going to make you smell beautiful because it's probably not going to clean your hands and help to keep you safe. Yeah. You know, many people, when when told that they just need to wash their hands and basic hygiene protocols will, you know, tend to say, is there anything else that we can do in order to, you know, combat COVID-19? But, you know, talk to us about the importance. I mean, we shouldn't be doing these things just because it's COVID-19, isn't it? I mean, these should be daily routines that we need to go through, washing your hands for at least uh, 20 seconds and stuff like that. It seems like we need to relearn these things. Yeah, I mean, we. I was diagnosed in 2004, so a little over 10 years now. Um, and sanitation has been such a huge part of my life. Um, I've always been so aware of it and seeing everyone freak out now, it's always like, why have you not been taking care of yourselves before this? Yeah. And um, the fact that sanitizers are all sold out, that proves how many people aren't actually sanitizing their hands. Yeah. Yeah. So it's been really interesting, but I think also hopefully it's woken people up to the fact that sanitization is so yeah. important. Because, yeah, the um, advice is that soap and water is just fine. If you need sanitizers, if you don't have soap and water, then I guess the sanitizer will, will work out. Uh, you also recently had a, a scare of COVID-19. Uh, Megan, what happened? So I went to Natal, it was my mum's 70th birthday, and that Sunday night was when Silver Ramaphosa spoke about um, like limiting, limiting travel and like working from home if you're sick. And it was the first sort of mention of the whole COVID-19. And I had to fly home that Monday and I was terrified that my flight was going to be cancelled, but it wasn't luckily. And then when I got back to Joburg, I had such a bad fever. Um, I was hot. I had like those red spots on my cheek. I was coughing and coughing. Um, I was battling to breathe when I was walking any distance. And I knew that it wasn't just my muscles being fraught. So my husband put me into the spare room. (laughs) I wasn't even allowed to go back to my bed. And the next day I phoned my doctor and she said I had to go straight to the emergency room. They weren't happy me going through to her rooms just in case I infected others. Right. So I went to Olivedale to the emergency room there. They were really good, um, like testing, asking you questions before you even walked into the hospital. And I had blood tests and x-rays. And they weren't happy with what those were looking like. So um, my the doctor on duty then said that he wanted me to have the COVID nineteen test, which was awful. Mm. (laughs) Um, Yeah, it's really not a pleasant experience. They stick the I can't even think of the word now, like right up your nostril as far back as they can get it, because obviously you have to test there. Then they put one onto your throat. They have to scrape against your tonsils. And yeah, it feels awful. And then with the testing, you also have to fill in a form of everyone that you've been in contact with for the past two weeks. And then you really begin to realize how serious this is because it's your work colleagues, it's your family. I had just been to Natal, so it was everyone on the plane. It was my mum and my aunts who are older, so they're more susceptible to get coronavirus. Um, I work with ladies in Kaya Sands with the Rare Bear Project, and they also, like, they don't have clean running water there. 
and now I could have given them corona. And it's just, it's really scary when you begin to realize how many people you could have impacted with this. We're looking at your beautiful pictures there, and we thank you very much indeed, Megan, for coming on, sharing your experience with us, and uh, yeah, gi giving us some advice on you know, how to handle the situation. No problem. Thank you so much for having me. All right, Megan, you be well. Thank you very much indeed. That was Megan Hunter there.